Hey guys, Simitar here and today we will go through a special video dedicated to the best warrior mods for Skyrim. Strong, fast and agile. No matter if you are classic two-handed warrior, heavy armored one-handed tank with a shield or dual wielding berserker in light armor, absolutely all mods from this list will be useful for you. Best and most useful in many categories – combat, weapons, armors, various gameplay mechanics, player homes and so on. Let's go! Even if you are very good equipped and have good armor rating, there are different situations when just a good armor is not enough. You can fight too many enemies at once, fight with a boss that has insane damage, or just play with a lot of enemy mods, or at legendary difficulty. And that's when TK Dodge saves the day. Mod gives you ability to dodge in all four directions and so avoiding the damage, whatever it is – direct weapon attack, arrow or magic projectiles. When dodged wisely and just in time, it can be a life savior. In addition, it makes combat much more dynamic and fun. And of course, there is a cozy MCM menu when you can set up everything – dodge stamina cost, different other conditions and if you don't like that ninja dodging animation, you can always switch to step dodge too. There are several well-known and simply great combat mods, but for the warrior directly, the most important combat mod is Wildcat, Combat of Skyrim. Why exactly the Wildcat? While of course improving enemy AI and making combat just more challenging in overall, it gives the most realistic feeling of actually fighting your enemies. Let me show you. First of all, all regular attacks now cost stamina for both you and NPCs. One-handed attack costs 5 stamina, two-handed – 10, fully drawing a bow and holding a bow cost you 5 stamina and 5 stamina per second respectively. Mod also gives stamina cost to swimming – 5 per second. Actors that are out of stamina are considered fatigued, slowing down movement speed by 15%. Magicka and stamina regenerate up to 30% faster at high health and respectively up to 30% slower at low health. Injuries and Stagger – All actors on the battlefield may become wounded in battle, getting briefly staggered and suffering a random injury. Each injury has an immediate trauma effect representing pain and shock, and a lingering effect that lasts until the victim is healed to full HP or for 5 minutes. Undead and automatons are immune to trauma effects, but are still damaged by the lingering effects. There are 7 possible injuries – arm, front leg, chest, head, spine, leg and hind leg. Each one comes with its own negative effects. Injuries are absolutely immersive part of the mod that gives you feeling you are fighting real enemies, but not just like dummies with HP bar. That can also give you different tactical maneuvers. Also actors hit by an attack or damaging explosion while pulling back a bow get interrupted, throwing off their arm and ruining the shot. Time blocking. Blocking an attack within 1 second after raising a shield or weapon blocks 25% more damage and briefly staggers a melee attacker. That's a very useful moment for accurate players. Attacks of Opportunity It is another very interesting mechanic, giving you additional realistic and pretty logical combat moments. You deal and take bonus damage with weapons and unarmed attacks while meeting different conditions. For example, Actors take 50% more damage when making power attacks, that's logical as huge weapon swing leaves you open. Staggered and paralyzed targets take 25% more damage, as well as actors below 25% of health. But when you are above 75% of health, you take 25% less damage, and so on. The full list can be found on the mod page. Wildcat also offers huge amount of various tweaks, balances and improvements. For example, big creatures like giants, mammoths or dreamer centurions take less damage. You can change game lethality settings and so on. And of course, there is a great MCM menu, it is really detailed and easy to use, so if you don't like some of mod features, you can simply disable them or tweak the values. Your Warrior so that's obviously you need some weapon variety. When it comes to weapons, Lore Weapons Expansion is a great mod to expand your weapon arsenal with dozens of new, but absolutely lore-friendly weapons, based on Cyrodelic weaponry. This arsenal fits the game greatly and simply looks great. But enough words, 
Just take a look on some of them. Royal Armory New Artifacts is a great weapon mod, but with a bit another functionality. While previous one simply adds new unenchanted weapons to the game here and there, Royal Armory adds unique named weapons with very strong and original enchantments to the most of Skyrim's important characters like Ulfric, General Tullius, Isran and so on. These weapons will be a strong companion in your adventures and that also makes all that important characters to finally have weapons that are matching their status, and for you, make Westland's progression and fights with their characters much more rewarding. In addition, some of them have unique models for even more badass appearance. Now we need to talk a bit about armors. But well, there is no doubts about the mod. Immersive Armors is the biggest armor mod ever that seamlessly integrates dozens of new armor sets, shields and other stuff to the world. So you can buy them from traders, find in a boss chest and take from your dead enemies. Immersive Armors absolutely deserved his number one place between all armor mods. It has tons of them, almost all are lore friendly with different stats, so you can fight an armor for your character no matter what his level or class is and no matter what your taste for armors is. You will always find something that will fit your taste greatly, and this brief demonstration will show you that. Now, when we have dealt with armors and weapons, let us add some realism to their usage. Loot and degradation makes that perfectly. Now, tempered armors and weapons gradually degrade in combat. Weapon degrades when you hit, armors and shields degrades when you get hit. You can see degradation process easily looking on cozy status icons. If you don't have good smithing skills, don't worry, all blacksmiths are now offering tempering services based on their skill, so your long grey main will always temper items better than usual smiths, and so on. You can also buy repair kits to always be able to repair your goods in the wilderness. Mod also adds temperate items to NPCs based on their levels, as well as adding even more features. NPCs now will loot their dead enemies or sometimes even allies if those dead allies will have useful items. NPCs now also have access to enchanted items usage. Mod has an MCM menu, so almost all mod features can be tweaked or disabled in it to fit your taste. Enhanced Skyrim Factions – The Companions Guild Companions Guild is a must-play guild if you're a warrior, that's pretty logical. But I don't know what about you guys, but I always was a bit embarrassed that you can like uh, come to guild at level 1 Vagabond and bang, finished questline in 2 hours and became a companion's harbinger. You may not have proper skills, experience, you even can be a mage without any warrior skills at all. How such a person could lead a warrior's guild? What about some requirements at least? 
This mod solves this issue as well as the expanding companion storyline with a lot of new quests, lore-friendly dialogue lines and much more. Now, you need to actually be a warrior to receive main companion's quests and to become a harbinger. And new quests and dialogue lines will also please you a lot. And if you'll find some moment or feature or requirement not needed, there is an MCM menu where you can set up all requirements and some other stuff. Have you ever noticed that there is simply no chance to evade Drogor or Bandit attack even if you jump straight behind him? Ever ask yourself why TK Dodge need invincibility time window? Answer is simple. Enemies in Skyrim have auto-aim, so they are instantly turning in your direction even in the middle of weapon swing. That always looked absolutely ridiculously for me and ruined combat realism. Not with mortal enemies. Now you can dare aim bot your force, making combat much more realistic. That is tiny and very lightweight change, but it brings combat to absolutely new level, making combat moves, dodges and high speed finally to have some sense. Lock on. Lock on mechanism. This mod is pretty optional, but I have included it because it may be useful for a lot of players here. It is like a vice versa to previous one, but only for players. Sometimes, when you are fighting a lot of enemies, it is hard to focus on proper target, or you can just simply miss because of accidentally twitch mouse and so on. Lock on makes targeting simple as never before, similar to Dark Souls combat system. Just press a hotkey and you will be focused on chosen enemy no matter of your position. Mod will rotate camera automatically to never lose your target. In addition, in MCM menu you can reassign hotkey and choose from three different reticle images. I personally like alternate appearance. Even if you are a pure warrior and don't use magic pretty often, you still need to use it sometimes, in different situations. To heal yourself or to deal additional damage, or maybe you want to play as a hybrid of warrior and mage and so on. In that case, you don't really want to spend much time switching weapons to magic and make additional K bindings. And Spell Sword mod saves the day. It enables the casting of spells via weapons. The basics is, weapons can now be enchanted with spells. This enables the players to cast the spell with their weapon by pressing and holding the casting button and then either swinging their weapon, blocking or, in the case of bows and crossbows, shooting the arrow or drawing the string fully. Simple, effective and badass looking. This mod is one of the most useful ever created. And of course, in the MCM menu you can set up all the settings needed for mod work. That's all for or not? Didn't you think I will leave you guys without a proper player home for warriors? Mod number 11. Ruta. The warrior cabin. You know, it was very hard to choose from so many absolutely great player homes, but I stopped on this Eleonora masterpiece because it combines everything small size and minimalistic design to fit the warrior's nature, but at the same time all need a storages and workstations, making it the best combination of size, beauty and usability. In addition, there is even a small sauna outside. But enough talks, let the video talk itself better than thousands of words. Well, that's all for now, warriors, and I hope you enjoyed, as well as found something useful for your game. Be sure to enable channel notifications to not miss the new videos, and of course feel free to join channel community in Discord to always stay in touch with me, have cosy chatting and modding advices. 
And if you ever thought about supporting me directly to help me stand against demonetization wave on YouTube, check out my Patreon page and its rewards. Thank you for watching guys and stay tuned. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.